Hello. Welcome to Love Always Self. I'm Shira. Hi, y'all. I'm Karista, and thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Love Always Self. If you are a first-time listener, welcome, and welcome. thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Yay! So, just wanted to start off by asking you guys, the audience, what would you do if I told you that we had a tool uh, that you could use and access to live a healthier life, to decrease your resting heart rate and blood pressure, to decrease your cholesterol levels, to decrease or slow the aging process, decrease anxiety, depression, increase feelings of happiness and connected to, you know, self and the world, what would you do? Would you, would you utilize the tool? If I told you that it was a low cost of free 99 free, <laughs> would you use it? If I told you, you didn't need to talk to a doctor or get a prescription or a referral, would you use it? If I told you that there were no negative side effects Mm. Would you take advantage of it or would you continue to ignore that you too can use meditation to create a happier, healthier life and existence in this world? I mean, would you? <laughs> I know I would. <laughs> so for 15 minutes a day, just starting out and, and you, even if just starting out, you only have five minutes a day, yep. would you utilize the tool of meditation. If you could lower your blood pressure, your cholesterol, decrease signs of aging and increase happiness. I mean, you know, and, and this is the, this is the fun, the fun part that I like to talk about with you all the time is like, we can be in any state at any point in time and utilize the umbrella word of meditation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. practice this and implement this. And a lot of things that we have that go on within our own body and our own structure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. can be benef can be benefited by this, right? Mm -hmm. And can be better. Now, meditation in the past, like, I don't know, 10, 15 years has become quite the buzzword. So the mm. now thing to do, like, this is the hip thing to do is, you know, connect through meditation, but meditation has been around since, you know, pre-recorded history. So thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years, it's been utilized by different cultures, different religions mm. all over the world. And each of them you know, has been a beneficial tool to elevating this experience. And, you know, yes, there is the, um, the factor of going deeper. And sometimes that creates a awareness that there's some darker spaces or some shadow spaces that, um, haven't been given space to be held in awareness and shine light upon. So there are some struggles potentially that can come with meditation, but the beauty of meditation is it too is a tool to working through those struggles and challenges that come up in this process. Absolutely. I agree with that. You know, I get asked this quite a bit, um, probably at least once a week. Um, and that question is, uh, it, well, honestly, it's a question and a statement that I get. I don't know how to meditate. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's the statement I get. I can't meditate. Or I get the question of how do you meditate? Mm -hmm. And I would love to just address right here, right now, there is no specific way that you have to meditate. You do not have to sit with your legs crossed and your palms up in the air. And I think that that you know, conversation could even be argued at some, some with some teachers, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there, there's no perfect form of meditation. And, and I want to throw that out there for all of you listeners who feel like you don't know how to do this. There, there's, there's not really like a rule book that you have to follow. It's like, you know, one of the things that people I think really struggle with is 
the aspect of sitting in silence Mm -hmm. and then reconciling that with our monkey minds that don't know how to turn off. And so there's this idea that to be in meditation, you have to be without thought. And that's, that's not true. That's not, it's, it's learning how not to attach to those thoughts and feel like there's an action that needs to be taken and just allowing those thoughts to, you know, maybe bubble up and continue to rise to the surface without connecting to them directly. You watch them, you observe them, you observe your feelings in response to them. These are all different types of meditation. Yes. It's nice to have a quiet mind and that may be a goal. I like to say, sorry, it's okay if you don't reach it right away. Yeah. I like to say the, uh, the Matthew McConaughey phase where he's like, uh, I can't remember the name of the movie, but he was like, I like to wave at it. It passes me by. And I'm like, (laughs) yeah, that's what I do with my thoughts during those meditation moments is like the thought comes up and I don't try to take an action on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And when I say action, I mean, say I have a thought that comes up like, oh crap, I needed to start laundry. Okay. That's my thought. But I'm not like, ooh, now what do I got to do next? And then I got to do this next thing, right? And then, oh, let me get up in the middle of this meditation movement and go actually start the laundry, right? Like I'm not taking an action towards something. I'm just observing it. So one of the tools that I use, and and actually I used this morning during my meditation, was um, creating a visual box in my mind. And I can make it ornate or plain or you know, you can, you can create whatever kind of box goes into your mind room Ooh, decorate the mind box. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) And when I had a thought come up, you know, I want to acknowledge that my, my mind, my ego is trying to tell me things to protect me, to keep me, you know, moving throughout my day to keep me, you know, on the right track, um, quotation fingers for our listeners. (laughs) (laughs) And what I did uh, this morning was those thoughts that came into my mind that I was struggling to not attach to, I would place in that box and say, I'm saving you for later. So I'm not forgetting. And so I'm setting the attention or intention to hold attention for that later. So I'm not completely dismissing, but I'm not attaching in that moment and have to do anything. And I'll shut the lid and say, thank you. And I'll set it on, you know, a shelf in my mind and acknowledge I will come back to you later. And that helps me to, again, um, not attach to those thoughts. Yeah. Take an action. That's fantastic. I like that idea. Um, I would say my biggest struggle, um, that I've always experienced personally uh, is the struggle of not being able to find a quiet space. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember when I first started practicing meditation, I would actually become frustrated because I would finally get into this like quiet space and then something would interrupt it. Like something in my household would interrupt it. And then I found myself getting like frustrated or mad that I was being interrupted. And then I heard this thought like loud and clear and in this thought, and I knew it was from my guides, but I was like, you need to learn how to practice this, even in a chaotic environment. And I was like, Oh, snap. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. And that's, yeah, that's actually a, a Buddhist practice mm-hmm. is to learn how to find peace amongst the chaos. Yep. And, you know, ideally we know how to do that right off the bat. However, that's not reality for the most of us, for most of us. And it does take creating that quiet place sometimes for us to learn how to connect with that and create those neural pathways that, you know, um, encourage new habit forming mental activity. And when we are able to start digging that path and, you know, brushing things out of the way and seeing where we're trying to go, then we're going to be able to better do that when there's more chaotic times and we're able to connect and stay peaceful and in our uh, grounded space, our centered space during those chaotic timeframes. You know, and most people do this already. You just don't know that you're doing it. I'm going to throw out some examples. 
Mm -hmm. Um, I, Oh, I'm going to use the, the example from the, the sex in the city movie when Charlotte was, you know, in her kitchen and she's wearing this beautiful white skirt and she's making cupcakes and her kids are like screaming at the top of their lungs. And then she like goes into her pantry, like, and she just closes the door and she takes a really deep breath. And, and she's just like, you know, and she's kind of, she's like releasing emotions, you know, mm-hmm, that she was mm-hmm. trying to like, just have a moment to escape. Right. That smidget moment of, you know, that, that too is a slight form of meditation. Mm-hmm. That's just taking yourself and in recentering, you know, and, and going within just a little bit to like, relieve the stress or bring down the anxiety or refocus. Um, and that's yeah. definitely a helpful tool in, you know, uh, practicing meditation is connecting with our breath. So when we notice thoughts coming up, that's another avenue that we can take to kind of bring us back into this moment with our intention. So connecting with our breath, how it feels, following it, going into our lung spaces, filling deep into our belly, and then on the exhale, following that air outward and just connecting that pathway in and out. And it kind of allows that, the monkey mind chatter to kind of, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) Some other forms of meditation that you may not be aware of, um, zoning out. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I, I will do that during the day a couple times just to like push away from my desk and just stare off into space. Yeah. And that is a form of quieting the mind, quieting that external, um, uh, uh, input and, um, chanting or singing. So when you're singing without the radio, you're doing something similar. We're connecting with those words. We're connecting with that heart centered space and, you know, uh, allowing that breath to go outward. We're connecting with the breath when we're singing. Yeah. It's like, and yoga because yoga uses breath work as well and body mm-hmm. movement. And that can yeah. actually be a form of meditation. Yeah. And, and yoga is definitely a holistic form of, uh, spiritual practice. So you have the breath work, you have the physical work, you have the, uh, they connect the meditation with that spiritual work. So we're looking at all forms of care for the body, mind, and soul in yoga and meditation is a very important part of that. Yeah. I definitely need to do more yoga. I'm I need to do more yoga. (laughs) It's, it's a nice way to connect and it's a nice way to turn things off, uh, as far as the mind goes. And actually, you know, now, now that I say that out loud, you know, meditation doesn't actually turn off the mind. Uh, scientists have actually found through different studies that what it does is it kind of shuts down the acceptance of external or the connection to external input. So all of that, you know, distracting noise that's coming from outside of us, it just, it's still received, but we're not accessing it. Right. You're not tapping into it. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're actually shifting that into tapping into that natural state of being within and quieting the external. So we're learning to listen to what's within. Um, I've heard that some, you know, like to use um, mantras Mm -hmm. or for helping with the disconnection of your external input. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, And you can, you don't, there's no specific mantra that you have to do. You can actually create one. And, Um, and what mantras are, are like a grouping of words. So, um, typically it's from, um, let's see the, the Hindu background and they take different seed sounds like om and we'll place them with different words, Mm -hmm. uh, in Sanskrit. Now as Americans, I don't, I, I don't know Sanskrit. Okay. I know om, I know a few words. Um, but outside of that, it's, 
utilizing those positive affirmations in a way. And that can be our mantra. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. 110% on those positive affirmations being a mantra. Mm -hmm. You can even put a little jingle tune to it if you want to. (laughs) <laughs> and start chanting <laughs> and start chanting Ooh, it and then pull out the drums because those drums and that beat, you yeah. know, you just start getting into this rhythm yeah. and that too is utilized in different cultures, uh, to help get into that meditative space. Ooh. Or if you don't, you know, if you don't own drums or, you know, can't get access to those, you can use your thighs you know, or your hands and just tap on your thighs and do your own little drum beat on your own physical body, free 99. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and use that. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that's almost like tapping. Yeah. That's, I was just going to say, it's very similar to tapping, which is used as a therapeutic method to help with different, um, uh, anxieties and healing of traumas. So, I mean, what a, what a great thing to utilize during this as well bringing in that joy, that, that peace and just tapping that into the body. Yeah. It's like reaffirming. Oh man, that'd be kind of fun. And I know that sometimes uh, it's, it's recommended to try using mantras when you go for like a walk, even if you're in like a, you know, who cares what anybody thinks, you know, like, sure. You're talking to yourself, whatever. And uh, let go, let go of external judgment. Um, (laughs) But yeah, and, you know, just go on a walk, start saying your mantras, you know, if you don't, if you don't want to be out in public or move around or anything like that, just sit inside. Mm -hmm. Um, I use tools, especially in the beginning, I use tools like my headphones. Um, I got my meditations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would do guided meditations, you know, with my headphones. Um, or, um, I would make sure that I purchased headphones that had a noise cancellation feature on it you know, cause maybe I wasn't very good at tuning things out in the beginning. Yes. Um, and then I would, I would force myself to, you know, or challenge myself really to start, you know, every once in a while, take the headphones off. Um, and this is why sometimes we, we, we say that modalities can be helpful. They're not required, but they can mm-hmm. be helpful. And that's another modality is headphones Agreed. or eye covers or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I, I couldn't agree with you more because uh, as much as I would like to uh, connect with peace and chaos all the time, <laughs> it takes practice. And it so, does. yes, I do utilize my headphones and my eye mask. So um, another type of meditation is just walking meditation. Mm-hmm. So getting out in nature, not having the headphones and connecting with the things around you, the trees, the breeze, the sun, you know, the birds singing yeah, and, and just being open to acknowledging the beauty and the magic that is innately in life. Yep. It's an appreciation. I get this, um, this thought in my head, well, you know, well, what if I live in a, in a really busy city? Um, well, every city even has parks, right? I would even argue that watching people. Yeah. Just zone out for like a, just, just zone out, just observe. So people watching yeah. potentially another meditation without the creepy aspect, please. Or the judgment, right? <laughs> or just- the judgment. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the, um, there's two other types of meditation that I wanted to mention the there's transcendental meditation, which I believe a lot of us are like, Oh, that's the meditation that I can't do. And that's kind of going deeper, uh, before like it's connecting with the, the seed of the thought Mm -hmm. and then going beyond that even. So I have not mastered this by any means because my monkey mind, she is chatty. (laughs) (laughs) However, the one that I do feel successful in utilizing is called contemplative Mm. meditation. And that's actually holding space for the thoughts that do come up, not attaching to them, but rather looking at how the thought makes you feel, how it makes you react internally. And then going deeper, why, what is this about? 
what can this tell me? How can I utilize this information? And so we're actually taking consideration for um, what those thoughts are connected to deeper down. That's a good one. I like that one. The transcendental meditation um, is always been one of, I would say it's one of the, uh, uh, without bringing in some of the other types of meditation, like the mantra meditation and, and things mm-hmm. like that, that is a bit more difficult uh, in my opinion. Um, but again, it's not something you can put that on your list of things to achieve if that's what you'd like, you know? Yeah. Try to experience, try and experience it for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, meditation is, is utilized in group settings, in retreat settings, yeah, in single settings as couples, as friends, Meditation is utilized throughout our life without even calling it meditation. It's just that time and space where we're finding a little peace, connecting to what feels like home. It's really fascinating how beneficial meditation can be for the body. And this is something that's been studied for, you know, several decades. There's no scientific evidence that there's a consciousness, like there's nothing factual, right. Or ego, but we do know and have proven that stress causes dis-ease in the body. Yeah. Equating to chronic illnesses high I'm like pressure. literally living proof of that <laughs> high blood pressure yeah high cholesterol cancer you know autoimmune disorders all these different diseases that we spend so m- much money on billions of billions of dollars on each year and this free tool is readily available at your fingertips yeah. to help reduce the effects of stress. And what meditation has shown is that it reduces anxiety, it reduces depression, it reduces reactiveness, helps promote happiness, feelings of joy and peace and connectedness. So that right there, the fact that meditation has proven to be beneficial on the levels of stress, we can make the connection that meditation reduces stress, thus reducing our dis-ease and imbalance within the body. Absolutely. There is also um, the uh, lowering of impatience. Um, there's also improving your quality of sleep, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. improving Um, your breathing. mm -hmm. Um, they also have found, um, in studies that it increases your self-awareness, which is one of the biggest things we talk about here. (laughs) Um, and, uh, it, and I know I do this, uh, in my day job when I start to feel because of my, my building upon of my self-awareness. When I start to feel the anxiety build up throughout my workday and the stress, and I start to notice that my heart rate's different. Thank you watches for some of those things, but like, you know, and I start to notice that my heart rate feels different and things of that nature. I literally just sit back in my chair and I close my eyes and I take a few deep breaths and I drop the shoulders and I drop the tongue from the roof of my mouth. And that little step right there and one I, minute took me one minute to do right. Um, that little step right there, majority of the time I have this clarity moment in my head on what I need to do next. And especially for those of you that are like, you know, working in stressful environments or have a ton of work to do and you don't know where you want to start. So maybe there's like five things do right this second, you know, cause everybody likes to give you an same due date, right? Um, just try that, 
you know, again, close your eyes, drop your shoulders, drop the tongue from the roof of your mouth, take three deep take breaths, three deep breaths, and then listen to the first thought that comes to you. It's one of the most helpful tools in how I maintain being successful at work. Using this one minute exercise throughout the day, okay. taking five to 15 minutes at the beginning and or end of the day. Is it worth it to you? Are you worth it to carve out this time? I hope so, because I think you are. The answer is yes, in case you were wondering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all righty. So I hope that you know we were able to provide some really uh, good information and reasons behind why we keep bringing up meditation and connecting with the breath and connecting with yourself and creating some peace and relaxation and learning how to... Oh gosh. Yeah. We did an episode, um, I think last year about creating space for silence in chaos. So I will link that below and you can check that out too. If you need some more assistance or guidance on how to do that for yourself, setting those boundaries. Um, anything else? Oh my gosh. I just, you just kind of blew my mind when you said last year and I was like, whoa, it's been, a year. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All righty guys. Um, you yourself are the ones that ha will take care of yourself the best. Yep. It's hard, but we have to learn how to prioritize our needs. So and I encourage you to learn to start. She reminds me of this all the time when I go in my vent sessions and it's beautiful. And I'm like, you're right. <laughs> You know, I, I mentioned this to you earlier. There was a movie called Yes Day. And I think it came out in the last few years. And not to promote negativity, but sometimes we need a no day. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and learning how to set boundaries for ourselves. Because I will I will say I am a yes person. I will help you out if you ask. And sometimes I need to say no so I can help myself. So I can continue to be the love and light that I would like to be. <laughs> <laughs> it helps when I'm in a better state <laughs> or you might not get the best version of us. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> All righty, y'all. Oh, hope you guys are having a beautiful day and enjoyed this content. Please don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification. We would love you to also take a time to review uh, this content and let us know how we're doing. It does help us grow and continue to share our content worldwide. So we greatly appreciate your love and support as we continue to love and support you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of you beautiful souls out there. And don't forget to love first, love last, and love always. Bye, everybody. Bye, y'all. <laughs>so much for taking the time to be with us in this moment we hope you enjoy today's episode and we look forward to our next connection don't forget to like subscribe and follow to stay notified of new content from love always self if you have any questions or topics you'd like for us to discuss please hit us up on any of our social media platforms linked in the show notes below i'm karista and i'm shira and until next time remember to love first love last and, and love, love always, always. Love Always Self podcast is meant for entertainment purposes only. We do not make any warranties about the completeness, reliability, and accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. Any action you choose to take upon the information in this podcast is strictly done so at your own risk, and we will not be held liable for any losses and damages in connection with the use of our podcast. Any and all medical concerns should be addressed with a licensed healthcare provider, as well as any questions that may be derived from the information discussed in this podcast.